tonight on the program, tonight we're going to look at uh, UFOs in the Bible. One of the reasons why I want to uh, do this is because there's so much uh, information now coming out and so much focus coming from the government and world governments about uh, UFOs and it seems to be really getting uh, a hold in the mainstream now. And where would that relate uh, to the Bible? Or where would the Bible relate to what we call UFO, unidentified flying objects or extraterrestrial beings coming in to our atmosphere or our planet? Does the Bible give us any indication of that? And uh, does the Bible, can the Bible be used to answer some of these questions? The question has long been, is there something else out there? Well, the obvious answer to is there something else out there is obviously yes. There was uh, so many uh, angelic beings that was cast out of heaven, the Bible tells us, after Lucifer had, had fallen. Uh, the Bible says that there was myriads and myriads, kiliads and kiliads, it's numbers that you wouldn't even care to attempt to count, of angelic beings, and that one-third, the Bible says, one-third of that great number of angelic beings followed Lucifer and was cast out into the world, the universe. Whenever God restored the planet, brought this earth together, and created man, he warned Adam that there was people or beings that was out there. He told him to sub subdue the garden and keep it, which in the Hebrew meant that he was to keep the intruders out. So God warned Adam that there were intruders, there was people that lived outside of this world that would attempt to come in, and his job was to keep them out. All of that's clear Bible. So we're going to uh, do as much as we can tonight, and if we don't get it sufficiently taken care of, then we'll do part two of it next week. But let's start with this. Uh, a lot of the language and the things that's being used we're not real familiar with, especially as it relates to the Bible. So I'm going to read a couple, two or three parts out of a book that was written by a man named Xavier Hayes as he dealt with the Bible, UFOs, and, and all of these things. Let's listen to some of the language that he uses, which is then some of the language that is used in the world to identify these beings. And let's see, do they relate to God? Let's see, do they relate to the Bible? Let's first begin with this first part of his book. Mr. Hayes said that the supernatural elements of Scripture were actually alien encounters misinterpreted by ancient authors who lacked the proper vocabulary to describe what they were seeing. What is meant by supernatural elements are the things obviously that took place that defies or is outside our natural laws. Events that happened or beings that appeared, the supernatural elements. He then speaks of them being aliens and aliens by definition is a foreigner. And this word is relating or belonging or owing allegiance to another country or another government. That is somebody that is outside of our nation or outside of our world. They are aliens or they are extraterrestrials. An extraterrestrial is of, from, outside our earth or outside of the earth's atmosphere. In short, it's very simple. It's beings, it's materials that's not from here. They are alien. They are extraterrestrials. Whenever he talks about the supernatural elements and these beings, encounters, and such as the like, and he talks about the vocabulary of those who wrote of it not understanding nor having the vocabulary to even express what they saw or what they've heard. We see this all through the Bible, especially as we deal with uh, the book of Revelation in John, as he saw things that was taking place that he had no vocabulary to explain what it was that he saw. Whenever Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire, what was the chariot of fire? We don't know. but. You know, it could have looked something like this. And then we call that a chariot of fire because there was no vocabulary for a rocket back in the day. Now, I'm not insinuating at all that it was a rocket that took him up, but it was a chariot of fire. And whatever launched Elijah from this earth, there was fire connected to it because it was called chariots of fire. 
Remember, they did not have the modern vocabulary to say rockets or any of the other things that we commonly know, know today and is very much a part of our vocabulary. Whenever we look at the events that takes place in the book of Revelation, we see John talking about stars falling from the heaven and those stars would bring massive destruction, destroying one-fourth of the earth, a third of the earth, and then another third of the earth, causing great fire, great earthquakes to take place, poisoning of the waters, and killing uh, a third of what's in the sea. The Bible tells us simply that the word was torch. The word was for star that he saw falling was a torch. In other words, what John saw was something burning at one end that gave the appearance of a falling star. Obviously, today we know that those are missiles falling from the heaven into the earth, and it looks just like a fallen star, but it's nuclear war. So they didn't have the vocabulary to tell what they were seeing. This is what Mr. Hayes is meaning in his writings. So is there supernatural elements you're not going to read the Bible, most definitely. You're not going to read the Bible and not see supernatural elements involved. That is things, again, outside our laws, our laws of physics, our natural laws, things that took place that can't take place here in this world based upon our physical laws, but something was able to override it something more powerful than our physical laws. We see that all through the Bible. Also, the aliens. What is an alien? An alien is something that is from some other place. If it's another country, or if it's another planet, or if it's another world. Would there be aliens? And has there been aliens on this planet? Is aliens connected to the Bible? Could we even say that God himself was an alien and is an alien, that being he is not of this world. Let's look at these scriptures. John 8, 23, Jesus speaking. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. Philippians 3, 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now pay attention to the word in Philippians 3.20, conversation, for our conversation is in heaven. The word conversation in that passage of scripture that they translated as conversation, the Greek word is this that you see on the screen, and it means community, it means citizenship. The Bible is telling us that our citizenship is in heaven. Those that have been born again, our citizenship is in heaven. Jesus plainly said that he was not of this world. You are, he said, speaking to the lost that sought to kill him. But he said, I am not of this world. And those who have been redeemed and born again in Jesus Christ are literally citizens of another world, therefore making us foreigners and aliens in this world. Jesus goes on to make it even clearer. Referring to the time of when they were going to take Jesus to the cross, Jesus answered and said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered unto the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Clearly the same thing Jesus told Pontius Pilate, as Pilate told him, Know ye not that I have the authority, the right, the power to kill you? to have you crucified. And Jesus said, you have no authority over me whatsoever. You have no power over me whatsoever. You take nothing. I give my life. Meaning he had no jurisdiction over Jesus. And Jesus made it clear that if he desired to do so, he could call from his kingdom, not of this world, 10,000 angels. Jesus was an alien force. He was a foreigner. He was not completely man. He was seated by the Holy Ghost of God into Mary's womb. Ephesians 2.19 tells us, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens 
with the saints and of the household of God. Now God is an alien source to this planet. He lives outside our laws. He lives outside our world. He lives outside our universe. And the Bible is clearly telling us that the one whom he sent, the Lord Jesus Christ, was of the same kingdom the Father was, and in fact was and is God manifested in the flesh. There's a lot of technology here, I promise you, we don't understand. And the ignorance of the atheist and the so-called professors of our world is based upon the fact that they do not have vocabulary, not yet, to even possibly explain nor mental ability to even understand the technology that is just one dimension above us. But the Bible makes it clear here that there are alien forces. There is another kingdom. Jesus was from, from that other kingdom and that God himself is an alien source outside our universe. Mr. Hayes goes on to write. He says that Eden, the Garden of Eden, was not a terrestrial paradise. Terrestrial means earthly bodies. It was not an earthly paradise but an ancient laboratory where aliens created humans and spliced their own genes into them, thus creating an image of God. He goes on to say that the Nephilims, a race of giants mentioned in Genesis, were descendants of alien beings. Is this true? What about the earth being a laboratory? where alien forces created human life. Well, even Richard Dawkins, this crazed atheist, even Richard Dawkins admitted that there is a possibility that aliens from outside of us, outside of humanity, created, seeded, he said, mankind. Now, he can agree that aliens seeded mankind, but it could not possibly be God. The unbelief of an evil heart. Could we say that aliens seeded this planet? Could that terminology be used? That aliens created on what was called the Garden of Eden, that aliens created Mankind. Well, in all actuality, that's exactly what happened. And that alien created him in his image. What was the earth in Adam's day? What was the earth before it was invaded by the alien forces God warned Adam of? Well, we can't possibly know there are some sciences that's now beginning to unravel some things of the climate and atmosphere and such things at, at, at Noah's day, which would have been closer to that day. But was the earth what it is now? Not at all. We know that as a matter of fact. Now, the earth was at that particular time, I believe, in the image of heaven. Everything that we see on the earth, the Bible makes mention of it in heaven. The Bible tells us there are hills in heaven. The Bible tells us there are streets in heaven. The Bible tells us, that, tells us there are dwelling places in heaven. The Bible tells us there's trees in heaven. The Bible tells us there's fruit in heaven. The Bible tells us there's thrones in heaven. There's beings in heaven. Everything that we see on the earth. If God was going to create a planet of which he would let a fleshly being yet created in his image, why wouldn't he create the place that the physical beings was going to be, they being in his image? Why would he not create a physical place that would also be in the image of heaven. Well, it is most likely that he did. It all got blew up and it all got messed up when those other alien forces, the intruders that the Bible spoke of, 
warning Adam not to let them in, subdue the garden. Hebrew, it meant keep the intruders out. Once they entered in, then everything fell apart and the earth is nothing that it was. Eternal life here in this place, it's not anymore. The atmosphere, very much different. The oxygen rates, very much different. The size of the plants, very much different. Everything is different because it collapsed. Man collapsed it. So was there alien beings that in fact seeded the planet? Using that terminology, we can certainly apply it to the Bible. You may say alien forces seeded the planet. I can say then God created the planet. You may say alien forces seeded man, created man in their image. I can say God created man in their image. But if I say God, I am speaking of an alien force as is to us. Another place, another planet, another type of being. An alien did create this planet. So it was like a laboratory. He goes on to say, The flood of Noah, Hayes argues, was a way of scrapping a genetically flawed humanity and starting over. Even Jesus was an alien, he says. What was this genetically flawed human? Well, it wasn't genetically flawed because God, or if you want to say the alien force that created it, caused it to be genetically inferior or genetically messed up. What happened and what does the Bible tell us happened that would have created this genetically flawed being? The Bible gives us graphic details of it. The Bible says that there was a certain group of demon spirits. They were called the sons of God. That term is only used for beings that was a direct product of God, sons of God. In order to be a son of God, you have to be a direct production of God. Mankind is not sons of God. The Bible says we're sons of men. And the Bible says for us to reach sons of God, that we must become sons of God, renewed by the new birth, as we die unto ourselves, and as the scripture says, we are born again by the word of God. We are genetically changed. What happened that caused a genetic flaw in human beings? Again, the Bible clearly tells us. If you're wanting to know about UFOs, and if these people are so amazed with the possibilities of things being out there, why don't they simply go to their Bible? Every question they're asking, everything they're insinuating, everything that they are bringing to light, once again, the scriptures has clear answers. A flawed, genetically flawed man, race, human race, genetically flawed. Yes. How did it happen? The Bible says a group of demon spirits called sons of God. Angels are sons of God because they are direct productions of God. Jesus was the Son of God because he was not seeded by man. He was seeded by the alien force, the Holy Ghost, outside our atmosphere, outside our world, outside the boundaries of our law. The Holy Ghost seeded Mary. The Bible tells us that these sons of God, demonic spirits, took on physical bodies. These are alien forces, the Bible clearly telling us about, that took on natural bodies. The Bible tells us that they left their natural habitation and likened them unto Sodom and Gomorrah. These angelic beings taking on physical bodies, mated with the daughters of men, and the Bible says they produced giants in the land. These giants was the product of mankind and fallen angels. 
Now, if anyone should doubt that or say, oh, this is over my head, sounds crazy, whatever, I'm asking you simply go back to the Lord Jesus. If you think that no outside alien force could possibly seed a woman, then how did Jesus get here? That's exactly how he got here. So that in itself proves it can be done, and we have no reason to doubt what the Bible clearly states. That these sons of God, these fallen angels, took on physical bodies, mated with the daughters of men, produced giants in the land. Goliath was one of them. There was two eruptions, the Bible says, of this, until God finally took that group of angels and confined them into everlasting chains of darkness, the Bible said, to stop the foolishness. Nonetheless, this is what created the genetically flawed man. In other words, the seed, the Adamic seed, the seed that came from Adam, the one that was the direct manifestation, direct product of God, that seed being passed down is the seed line in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, that the Bible said that the Messiah, after man fell, that the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, the one that would bruise the head of the serpent, that he would come from. He would come from that genetic seed, the seed of Adam, the seed of man. Demons then attempted to destroy that seed line. The devil not knowing who the promised child would be, but knowing that God said he was sending one that would destroy Satan's kingdom, Satan wanted to stop it from ever happening. So at that time, the best way to do it would be to destroy the genetic line that the Messiah was going to come from. So he attempted to do so by having angels take on bodies, reproduce with women. Now you had beings that was genetically of man and genetically of fallen angels. Just like Jesus was genetically of man coming from the woman, but seeded by the Holy Ghost. He was not full man. He was both God and man. Therefore, all of the millions that was reproduced now by these fallen angels, these alien forces taking on bodies, mating with the daughters of men, all of these people now was half human, half demon. They were genetically altered and changed. So can we apply what Mr. Hayes wrote concerning the Bible? What his intentions are? I don't know. But all of this alien talk, all of this extraterrestrial talk, all of this UFO business, can we find it in the Bible? The Bible says that the whole time that Israel went across that desert for 40 years, that there was a light in the sky that followed them, and it was a cylindrical object. If they want to know what's out there, please just go to the Bible. It tells you very clear. And then the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 15, 40. There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So the Bible tells us that there are heavenly bodies, celestial, that's heavenly bodies, bodies of a heavenly nature, and that there are terrestrial bodies. Terrestrial means earthly. So there are bodies, heavenly bodies, and there are physical bodies. They're not the same. Will there be physical type bodies in heaven? Yes, it will. If you remember whenever Jesus came back, the disciples went to touch him, or the people went to touch him. And he said, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Jesus' body at that time had not yet been glorified. The Bible says that whenever he died, he went through the lower chambers of the earth to the paradise that was beneath, where all the souls was held that died in favor with God and freed them from that place. The Bible says that he went into heaven, received a glorified body. He came back into the earth, and that's when the disciples saw him. He let Thomas touch him. 
And in that glorified body that looked very much like a physical body to some degree, though they didn't recognize him until he spoke, it was in that physical body that could be touched, but glorified. That Jesus walked through a wall. How did he do it? Because it's obvious that the glorified body is of an alien nature to our planet. Not bound, constricted, or tied to the physical laws because it's not from here anymore. The body has been glorified. Nonetheless, I think we can leave it there. There's a thousand other scriptures we can give. But the simple fact is this. If they're so interested in UFOs and what's out there, why don't you doctors and you scholars just pick up your Bible and read it? I'm amazed how fast time flies I look in the mirror that tells no lies There's a clock in my mind that moves all the time Wasted hours counting lines in my face Let it be that you keep your conscience sound. 